Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We are coming along in an amazing series of studies on the book of Daniel. Today, from battle to victory, it's another picture of how God works out His purpose. The Most High God who rules in the affairs of men. If you've missed any in this series, you will want to go back because each chapter builds upon another. Go to our website, hopetv.org slash hope ss and you can watch the whole series and by the way we've also got a special series of bible studies on daniel and revelation chapter by chapter those two prophetic books intricately linked together go to hopebiblestudy.org that's hopebiblestudy.org keep studying we have so much more that we can learn but we're glad you're with us today for hope sabbath school and welcome to the team what a great series of studies this has been. I, I feel like I've been blessed beyond measure. Oh, and we're learning the basic truth that there's a God who rules over the world, but He wants to rule over our lives. He wants to be our Lord and Savior. And uh, we're just excited that we can be part of His kingdom, even as we study today. We're happy to hear from you, our Hope Sabbath School members around the world. Here's a, an email from Cyprus. I don't know. Have we heard from Cyprus before? Moses writes and he says, I'm the oldest Seventh-day Adventist Christian on the island of Cyprus Ooh, wow. and the grandson of the very first Seventh-day Adventist here in Cyprus. Every Friday evening, my wife and I have been watching Hope Sabbath School and we're blessed by the dedication of the 12 disciples. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all disciples of Jesus, aren't we? Uh, we love the lesson it's such, in such an interesting and constructive way. Blessings to you all, Moses. Well, Moses, you didn't tell us how old you are, but you're still following Jesus. And for that, we praise God. Looking forward to his soon return. Joanne writes to us from Georgia in the United States of America. Some of you have lived in Georgia. And uh, Joanne says... Hello, Hope Sabbath School family. Hello. I would like to extend a greeting to each one of you. I've been watching Hope Sabbath School for about three years. I was searching for something else, and I saw hope, and the word school caught my eye. Isn't it amazing how the Holy Spirit leads people? Yeah. I clicked on it, and there was Hope Sabbath School. I've been watching ever since. Amen. Amen. I've also copied several of your studies from the archives, which is very resourceful. I thank God for you and all that you do to spread the gospel. Your love, adoration, and thankfulness toward the Lord and Savior is evident in your teaching. Such heartfelt commitment. I appreciate you, and I will send a donation soon. Well, thank you, Joanne, but thank you also for writing to us because it brings great encouragement to know you were just kind of clicking through the channels and God led you to Hope Sabbath School. Here's a note from the other side of the world, Silivario, and he greets us with this word and then you tell me where he's from. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Bula. 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 All right, nobody's been to Fiji apparently. <laughs> Bula from Fiji, Hope Sabbath School. It's always a blessing to hear and watch you. From here is my home, my lovely wife, and my children, not forgetting our church members, the New Town SDA Church in Vanuatu. Well, thanks for writing to us, Silivario, all the way from Fiji. Here's a note from, uh, from a donor in Idaho in the United States of America. And the donor says, you have been a great blessing in our home. We're not always able to attend our local rural church for services. We deeply appreciate, appreciate being able to worship and study along with Hope Sabbath School. Thank you. And a gift for $2,500 wow. to help the ministry of Hope Channel. I just want to thank all of our donors. We're all part of a great miracle of God. And these are all volunteers here. And we are part of a mission to help prepare people for the soon coming of Jesus. Thank you for your support. Here's one last note from Habakkuk. That's a good Bible name. Habakkuk lives in Liberia. 
I just want to praise the Lord so much for Hope Sabbath School that He'll always use you to simplify His Word to His people in these last days. Amen. By the way, the smiles are very charming. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Especially yours. I think he's talking to Stephanie there. Thank you, <laughs> Stephanie. May the Lord bless you and keep you. You know, it's really true, isn't it, that, that even our expressions can be a witness for Jesus. Amen. And uh, Habakkuk, I'm sure you've got a beautiful smile too. We're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. And let's keep smiling for Jesus uh, so that doesn't Jesus say you are the light of the world? Mm. Yes. That's because the light of Jesus, who is the light of the world, shines through us. Right now, we've got a scripture song we'd like to sing. It's word for word from Daniel's book, Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 to 23, written when he was just a young man as a prayer to God. My wife put a little tune to it so we can memorize it. I'm sure you've learned it by now. If not, you can download it from our website. Let's sing it together. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. And He changes the times and the seasons, he removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and light dwells with Him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. And He changes the times and the seasons, He removes kings and raises up kings. Wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with Some people might say, it's so hard memorizing the Bible, but when you put it to a tune like that, you know, you might even wake up one morning. Blessed be the name <laughs> of God. It's just in your heart. That's what it means, isn't it? Your word I, I have hidden in my, heart. in my heart. It's not talking about the boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I've hidden God's word in my mind. 
And he says that his word is a lamp to our feet Amen. and a light to our path. So praise God for that. Amen. We're thankful that Daniel wrote his prayer down that we could memorize. Amen. We're thankful now that we can study an important topic from battle to victory. Why don't you join us as we pray and ask for the Holy Spirit's guidance. Father in heaven, thank you so much that your word is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. They may be Hope Sabbath School members even today who feel like they're caught in a great battle. Help us to learn as we study in Daniel chapter 10 that the battle is real, but victory is sure when we trust in God, yeah, that we have the assurance that Jesus will gain the victory for us. So bless us as we study today. May your Holy Spirit be our teacher, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Daniel chapter 10. Daniel, we discovered, was fasting and praying in chapter 9. He's fasting and praying again. And Kim, if you would begin our study in chapter 10 of Daniel, let's take a look at the first three verses. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. The message was true but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at time at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. So we've gone now from the time of Belshazzar. Remember, we were in the first year of Belshazzar, then in the third year of Belshazzar. Now where are we historically? Third year, year of Cyrus. Third year of Cyrus, Cyrus king Persia. of Persia. Mm -hmm. What is Daniel mourning about now? He's grieving, he's fasting and praying. Is it still related to the 70 years of captivity? Or is it something else? Does anybody know the answer to that? You mm -hmm. say, Derek, I don't know for sure, but Rodney, what might he be really sad about? At this point, uh, the Jews might have gone back from, from Babylon to their homeland. The first wave has yes, gone back. Yes, the first wave of the return. Yes. And they were facing great difficulties and challenges in rebuilding the temple. So is he making that up or is that in the Bible somewhere? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's in the Bible, isn't it, Rodney? Yeah. Would, do you have that passage? It's in Ezra, Ezra four? chapter 4. Mm -hmm. And it will even give the reference that it's the same time frame that is mm. happening. So word comes back to Daniel that the first wave of uh, exiles has gone back. Rodney, read for us Ezra chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. Let's see what's happening for them back in Jerusalem. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the descendants of the captivity were building the temple of the Lord God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel and the heads of the fathers' houses and said to them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do, and we have sacrificed to him since the days of Asaradon, king of Assyria, who brought us there. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the heads of the fathers' houses of Israel said to them, You may do nothing with us to build a house for our God, but we alone will build to the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Then the people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. They troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, mm. even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Mm. Why didn't Daniel go home with the first wave? What's the answer to that question? Why didn't he go home? Any idea? Mm. Stephanie, what, what, what might have been the reason why he didn't go back home? I think God needed him where he was. You know, is, doesn't Jesus say, my will is not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we know for sure that Daniel was a man of prayer. prayer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lord, what do you want me to do? And the answer is, stay. I want you to stay. I've got a work for you to do. Yeah. But he receives word 
that those who've gone back in that first wave are having a terrible time. And how's that affecting him? Well, Travis? He's mourning, but also I think it said he's realizing this was my previous vision in, nine where it said, in chapter 9 where it said that the walls will be built in troublesome times. And he's like, Lord, mm -hmm. my people are suffering. Mm -hmm. So he's definitely uh, feeling um, the pain of his mm. own people. Mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he confessed their sins. Mm -hmm. He's now feeling their anxiety and their struggle. And uh, there's one little indication in verse 12 that uh, as he's fasting and praying, that he's not just talking to himself. Alex, would you read verse 12 of Daniel chapter 10? Sure, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Now he's also going to talk to him about prophecy as well. But he, God cares about every aspect of our lives, doesn't he? Yes. Amen. And he's Amen. grieving because his people went home and they're having a very difficult time. Well, as he's praying, he does receive another divine revelation. And Shana, if you could read for us in Daniel chapter 10, uh, verses 4 through 7. And as Shana reads this description of this glorious being, are there any other pictures in the Bible that come to mind? You say, that sounds like... Mm -hmm. Because all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, right? Mm -hmm. Who is this glorious being? Let's look in Daniel 10, verses 4 through 7. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And in the fourth and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hiddekel, then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body was also like the barrel, and his face was as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as the lamp of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to, hit, to hide themselves. <laughs> There's a lot in that story, right? Let's start with the details of verse 4. Why does it matter? 24th day, first month, where I was standing. Nicole, why does that matter? Well, it's the, once again, it's historical um, mm. time frame of where we are, and it makes it more realistic that this actually is happening. It's not just this a statement of someone's emotion. Right, right. I think maybe I had a vision, but I'm not sure. No, no. Mm -hmm. Very specific, right? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the description that, that Shana just read? Mm. Do you have some sympathy for Daniel as he's trying to describe? Is this a real being, or is this like a symbolic picture? Mm. What do you think, Shana? I it sounds something like something supernatural, so much so that he was afraid and like everyone else around him ran. Well, they, they didn't even see the vision and they yeah. ran, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's apparently this awareness that a divine being is around. They don't even see him, yeah. but they're running, right? Mm -hmm. Talk to me about, you know, Scripture, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Daniel's struggling to describe this glorious being. Stephanie? That's what I was going to say. It seems like he's trying to find words to describe <laughs> what he's seeing. But it does remind me of the words in Revelation mm. would chapter you, would, 1. Okay, Revelation chapter 1, verses like 12 to 18, somewhere yes. in there? Yes. So this is, uh, remember we said, well, let me just pause a minute and tell our viewers, Daniel and Revelation are interconnected. Mm -hmm. That's why we have a Bible study series for you, hopebiblestudy.org. You can study chapter by chapter from both books. And, and Stephanie, you're using that as an illustration of how tied they are together. Yes. Uh, give us that description in Revelation chapter 1. And the King James Version says, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the, to the foot, and girt with the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were, like, were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. 
and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Mm. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Yes. I imagine, you know, in the kingdom of heaven, Daniel and John talking and saying, I had a hard time describing that too. <laughs> Who are they seeing? Well, it depends because one's pre-incarnate and one's the incarnate. But uh, who are they seeing? They're seeing the Son of God, right? They're seeing the Son of God in all of His glory. Revelation, of course, the Son of God has already become flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus, fully Son of God, Son of Man. This is before the incarnation. He's seeing the Son of God in all of His glory. How does he respond, John? Would you look at verses 8 and 9? Um, how, how, would, <laughs> how would we respond if the Son of God in all of his glory showed up uh, and spoke to us? Yeah. And again, the King James says in verses 8 and 9, Therefore I was left alone, and I saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me. For my comeliness was turned in me to corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then I was in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. Um, what do you think? How is he responding? Is he afraid? A lot of times when an angel comes, the angel has to say, fear not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is he afraid or is he just... Shana, how is he feeling? Um, well, based on his actions, uh, he fell into a state of humility, like this is someone like I need to collapse. worship. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Collapsed even, huh? Mm -hmm. Just like he's in the presence of divine. Mm -hmm. the Holy One, yeah, yeah, the divine, the Son of God. He's in mm -hmm. his presence, mm -hmm. and uh, it's an overwhelming experience. Yes. You yeah. know, some people think, I'm just going to stroll up to the <laughs> throne and make my case. Right. You know, angels yeah. bow down, right, yeah. mm -hmm. and cry, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Well, here he is. He's lost his strength. Um, he's fallen to the, his face to the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then someone is going to come up, Travis, and uh, touch him. And let's see who that is in verses 10 through 12. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Suddenly, a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Mm -hmm. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So who is this individual? This is not the Son of God now, right? No. No. Who's this individual? Gabriel. Gabriel. It's an angel, angel. probably right. Gabriel, Gabriel, right? Because he's been yeah. sent like he was before. Yes, yes. And what position is Daniel in at this point? Did you get the description? Yeah. He's still he's on the ground with his face. Frustrated. He's frustrated. No, no, he's got up from being flat on his face. He's trembling. Mm -hmm. yes, what does it say? Yeah, he's on his knees and, knees and the palms of his hands. Yeah. Yeah. I think we call that crawling, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> so he's kind of, you know, he's not quite flat on the floor, but he's not up yet. And this angel comes, uh, puts a hand on him, and offers a word of encouragement to him and gives him a revelation. Mm -hmm. this, this study is about battle to victory. It gives mm -hmm. us a revelation that we would not know unless the prophet wrote it down, Evelyn. Mm -hmm. Could you read for us verses 13 and 14 of Daniel chapter 10? Yeah. I will be reading from the New King James Version. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I had been left alone there 
with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. And the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Can a human prince withstand a covering cherub from the throne room of God? No way. No way. So, Abigail, what does this mean? The spiritual prince is, 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 is going to the, um, you know, the cosmic conflict, the prince of the darkness, mm. trying to stop God's angel from doing, you know, his work. So there, is, there are spiritual forces, what Jesus calls principalities and powers, right? right. Yeah. At work. And this angel, Gabriel, says, I was in a spiritual battle mm. with, with a fallen angel yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. who claims authority over the kingdom of Persia. Yeah. Yeah. How long was that, did that take until he got some help? 21 days. 21 days. Oh. So, what does that tell you about this great battle? Mm. It's real. It's real? It's intense. It's ongoing. It's, it's no, intense. It's no joke. <laughs> it's certainly not a joke. You know, uh, uh, today there's all kinds of movies and things, and, and there's like confusion. You mm -hmm. know, people think, well, it's just make believe. Yeah. Mm. This is telling me, and of course, we learn in the life of Jesus, that this is not imaginary battle here. Mm. Mm. This right. is principalities and powers. John. It also reveals that there are large things at stake mm -hmm. because of this battle. Mm. Large things are at stake. Uh, whole kingdoms. Yes. kingdoms yeah. Destiny of, of nations Nation. and people. Nicole? And he needed help. He, it says that he was, he, he, Michael came and helped him. So if he needs help with this, with this spiritual battle, what do we think, what do we think we, we are? <laughs> we clearly need help also. Come on. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's do a computer search if we can, because some people don't think that there are any forces of evil. That's just, you know, that's just kind of maybe a bad thought in your mind, but it's not real. It's imaginary. Take me to some passages of scripture that show that this battle that is described by Gabriel in Daniel 10 is, is very real. What, what Bible text comes to your mind immediately? Anybody have one? Ephesians 6. All right, uh, Stephanie, uh, the book of Ephesians, mm -hmm. chapter 6 is one. Yes. We could go to lots of them, and we will. I want to just show how real this cosmic battle is. But you're, you're here, this is after the ministry of Jesus and his ascension to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul's writing to Christians in Ephesus. That's and right. What does he say to them? And I'll read from verses 10 through 17. The King James Version says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Mm -hmm. So where do you see the, in, the, the intensity of the battle described here? Some specifics. Yeah. Verse 12. Verse 12? We, we don't yeah. wrestle against flesh and blood. All right, blood. these are not human forces, yeah. right? Yeah. But they're organized, yeah. aren't they? Yes. Yes. Principalities. Rulers. Powers, rulers. rulers of the darkness of this age, yep. spiritual hosts of wickedness. Mm -hmm. It's an organized confederacy mm -hmm. of evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? What else? Mm -hmm. You have to be armed. You have to be protected, right? That's right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what's the most important part of the protection? 
Or would you say it was all, all of it? Which whole armor? Would, would you just like the protection on your feet? Mm. No. <laughs> we need what? The whole, the whole, whole armor. armor. You, that, that's uh, one word in the Greek. It's the word panoplia, mm -hmm. from which we get the English word panoply. Yeah. It's a covering, mm -hmm. right? A covering. So we've got this, if I can use the word, defensive armor. Yeah. Yeah. But we also have an offensive, John, Ooh. weapon. What is it? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Yes. You know, that's also very interesting. It's not just talking about the Bible. It, it uses the word which means the specific saying of God, the specific mm. word. In other words, you can't fight the enemy like <laughs> holding up a Bible, right? Some people think that. They sleep with a Bible on their chest mm. if they feel they're under attack. We need the Bible in our heart, yes. Yes. right? So the specific words of God. Where do we see that in the life of Jesus? Mm. When, he was when he was tempted, tempted by Satan. When he was tempted. Yeah. 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 Turn these stones into bread, and how does he reply? It Rodney? is written. It is written. Right. Jump off the pinnacle of the temple. Shana, how does he respond? It is written. It is written. It is written. Uh, bow down and worship me. <laughs> I'll give you everything. And he responds, it is, written. it is written. And then it says the devil left him. Amen. And we say, Amen. Amen. Right. It's a real battle, by the way. Some people think the battle that Jesus had in the wilderness was just kind of a parable. It was a real battle. Mm -hmm. The battle is intense. So thank you for sharing that passage. Uh, principalities, fiery darts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an opportunity in our study to share where you felt fiery darts coming at you. Mm -hmm. That's real too. Mm -hmm. right? Not real fiery dart, but real attack mm -hmm. of the enemy. Give me another Bible passage, Nancy, that shows that this cosmic battle described in... in the, Daniel 10, is very real. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of Job. Okay. So mm -hmm. Job, the second chapter, and verses 1 through 5. Okay. Job, let's take a moment to find that. Job chapter 1, or chapter well, 2, chapter you want two. to read, okay? Yeah. Chapter 1 gives us a little insight into the battle, but you're reading mm -hmm. chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Right. So Satan has already come in chapter 1 and attacked him, but Job responded um, positively toward God. He said, naked I came from my mother's room, and naked, blessed be the name of the Lord. But then in chapter 2, should I start reading now? Please, verses, verses 1, one through, through 5. five. This is from the New King James Version. It says, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, and still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. So Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. Mm. Why was Satan allowed to come into this heavenly council? Mm. <laughs> what do you think, okay. Kenneth? Because um, we gave the ownership that God gave to our first parents, Adam and Eve. We, we, through deceptive means, we handed it over to Satan. So he's walking to and fro on the earth with yeah. what kind of attitude? Mm. Yeah. Like he owns a charge. This Indian. belongs to me. Yeah. He's wrong. It doesn't belong to him. Yeah. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's. Yeah. Yeah. But he claims dominion yeah. because our first parents uh, disobeyed God, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he claims to be the prince of this world. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. And uh, so it describes this battle. What What is he saying that is not true? Mm. Satan. What is he saying? Mm -hmm. What won't God do? Oh. Do you know? You have to read the rest of the chapter. Yeah. Satan says, stretch out your hand. Mm. 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 Uh, does God do that? No. 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 What does God do? You have to read the next verse. He lets him. He lets you, can him let, you can do it. You, you do that, but you but, can't take his but, life. It's like... Uh, You'd think that the, the devil would figure out who's in charge, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but clearly he's caused havoc in the family and in his business. Now he's attacking Job's life. Yeah. The battle is very real. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And uh, praise God, Job doesn't curse God and die, right? Mm -hmm. He says, even if, he, even if God slays me, which God would not do, but allows me to be put to death, yes. like the martyrs down through the ages, yeah. mm -hmm. yep. I'm, I, I'm, I'm still going to trust him. Yes. Yeah. I love that verse where he says, mm -hmm. I know that my Redeemer yeah. lives. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he hasn't even read the story about the incarnation. He's long before that. Wow. But by faith, he believes in the plan of salvation. Isn't that awesome? Amen. But there's another amazing example. Thank you for sharing that one of um, the battle being very real. Mm -hmm. Now, again, let's go back to, to uh, focus on Daniel 10. Da Daniel's grieving because things have been hard. I'll, I'll take a few other verses, but just giving the context again. The battle's been really hard, and he's grieving because... Actually, it's this same kingdom of darkness that's opposing his people mm. who are trying to get rebuilt mm. in Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. yes. You know, that, they are the enemy, okay? The kingdom of darkness is mm. the enemy. Mm. He's yeah. grieving about that. The angel comes to him with some words of encouragement. But even that angel experiences mm. oh, conflict, God. this battle, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. And Michael has to come to his aid. Mm -hmm. We've looked at Ephesians chapter 6. We've looked mm -hmm. at Job chapter 1. Is there one other, Travis, an important verse that you think we should add? Luke 22, 31. Okay. Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. Give us a moment to find that. Here Jesus, says, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, has been praying for Simon Peter. Luke chapter 22 mm -hmm. and verse 31. So you're telling me the battle is not only something Jesus experienced, but every follower of Jesus. Mm. And I would like to read Luke 26, 41 after this, because it goes along with that. Well, you would like to read two verses. Well, All right. we'll give you the opportunity to do that. But All start right. with Luke 22 and verse 31. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish I could read on where Jesus says, but I prayed for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. So who's this Simon? Peter. Believer or an unbeliever? A believer. Yeah. Simon Peter, right? Yeah. One of the leading disciples. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, uh, he gets overconfident, ends up denying Jesus, mm -hmm. but he's shown mercy and comes back. Amen? Amen. But okay, Satan has sought to sift you. Hmm. You know what sifting is, right? Mm -hmm. Like to shake you until you fall apart. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how real the battle is. Mm -hmm. You want to read... Matthew 26. Matthew 21. 26, verse... 41. 41. So, All right, Matthew chapter 26, give us a moment, <laughs> verse 41. And this actually adds some more light to... The situation. To the situation. Mm -hmm. Matthew 26 mm -hmm. and verse 41. And again, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And he says... Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm, mm. So the battle's real. Yeah. Yes. Uh, even the angel Gabriel experiences mm -hmm. the intensity of the battle. And Mark, Michael, he is called, interestingly, one of the princes, but in, in, later in Daniel is called the archangel or yeah. the leader of the angels, mm -hmm. which is another topic we'll look at. This key being apparently is even more powerful mm. than the covering cherub Gabriel. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. Michael comes to the aid of Gabriel. So the battle is very real, and the battle is also real in our lives. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to testify. Maybe there's someone watching Hope Sabbath School today and sa saying, I'm under attack right now. Mm -hmm. I feel the battle of the kingdom of darkness. Maybe you got an email from someone today and, and they say, I'm under attack, Alex. I, I, I need somebody to pray for me. The battle's real. I want to give you an opportunity to share a time when, when you felt like the kingdom of darkness was trying to hinder God's purpose and his plan for your life. Does anybody have a testimony to share? Yes, Nancy. So... Um... Whenever I'm getting ready to be on Hope Sabbath School, things happen. You know, once I was in a car accident a few days before. It was really, I hit my head really hard. I got a concussion from it. Other times it'll be 
relationship things. Someone will say something that's, and it just gets me down. It's, it just seems, and it's whenever it's getting close to the time to be on Hope Sabbath School. Now, the skeptic could say that's just coincidence, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, we all have times we have car accidents or... What do you think? Mm. Is it possible it's just a coincidence? It's always possible. But... It's always possible. But if I understand the cosmic battle, mm -hmm. uh, I can think of times in my life when I was preparing to do something important for God, and I just felt like this oppression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be doing bad things to come under attack. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I can think of times where I've had to just go to my godly wife, mm -hmm. Who not only write scripture songs, but she prays for me. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And say, I need prayer. Mm -hmm. I feel this, uh, yeah. this attack of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Now, someone watching will go, wow, it's happened to you too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody else have a, an experience where mm -hmm. you just felt like the, the kingdom of darkness was trying to get in the way of God's plan and his purpose? Mm -hmm. Travis. Uh, this was uh, quite a few years ago now, but I remember uh, I was just kept studying, studying the Bible and went to classes and learning about scriptures and I wanted to be sold out for Jesus and, and a whole evangelistic series and, and so I was working with a team in a church to do an evangelistic series and, and there were still things in my life, sins that I hadn't gotten rid of yet, but I still, you know, you're just on fire for God and you're recognizing these things and trying to figure it out. And, uh, and we faced opposition in the church and opposition within the family. And it was one thing after another until um, I finally just said, you know what, I quit. And I walked, away from, I walked away from all of it and the pastor begged me to come. And um, I told him, when I remember walking away that day, I had a sign that I told, I said, God, if you want me to continue in ministry, you have to have Derek Morris call me. And you were a part of this. And I t the next day, the pastor asked me to come back, and I said, no, I told God what it had to be. And the, the unique thing is that you and I didn't really talk back then. And can I share a part of the story? <laughs> I got up one morning, and I was in prayer, and somehow I bumped my phone. It was before 5 a.m. in Wisconsin. It was nearly 6 a.m. where I live. And I bumped the phone, and I saw it was dialing Travis. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, no, it's only 5 o'clock. <laughs> you know, have you ever bumped someone accidentally? Yes. Oh, no, quick. Um, what happened when you received just that, no, no voice message, just my name came up on your phone? It was the very, uh, that, the following day after I told God that, out loud in my truck, just cried it out to him. And I don't know, know why I had said that, and I said, well, that's, that's, that's it. And He's not going to call me. And I told the pastor, the pastor begged me the next day, and I said, no, I told God what the sign was, and he asked what, and I told him, and he kind of, well, okay, that's maybe a bit strange. And then the <laughs> next morning at 5 in the morning, an app I had downloaded the day before is calling, and your name is on it, and I thought, what is going on? Mm. And uh, later that day, I called Derek, and I told him what had happened, and... I just began weeping, and wow. he said to me, I don't know what happened. I got up in the morning, and my phone was calling you. It was the most... Hey, man. And uh, right then, I just weeped, and uh, I said, okay, this is tough, and I just learned from that circumstance, I'm in a spiritual battle, Yes. Mm -hmm. and the next time I go into this, I'm going to have the armor of God on. Mm. Every door closed so Satan can't come in. Yes. Ephesians chapter 6. Yes. Yep. Take up... Whew. The whole, the whole armor. armor. Oh, Put on the whole armor. Those are both active verbs. They're imperatives, actually. Yeah. Put on, take up, which tells you it doesn't happen mm -hmm. passively. Yeah. passively. Yeah. Mm -mm. It doesn't happen passively. Yep. It doesn't happen by accident. No. No. Take up, put on. And he's speaking to Christians, which means that followers of Jesus also experience attacks. Spiritual attacks. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. maybe more. Yep. Is that possible? Oh, yes. yeah. Jesus said it. Yeah. yeah. You know, they hated me, they'll hate you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the battle's very real, and, and we, we're seeing that come out of uh, 
Daniel chapter 10 mm. with the contention that occurs. Well, we've got to keep going, but I'm praying that someone watching, maybe you're watching and you're going, I thought it was just me that was in this battle. The battle is real, but I've got good news. We've got the armor of God. Jesus is our strong deliverer, and Jesus wins. Amen. And that's what we want to focus on. Amen. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 19. Abigail, would you read verse 19 for us? Because the enemy is using intimidation and violence mm -hmm. to hinder God's purpose and plans for our lives. But uh, where, where do we see some good news? Yes. Um, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, Daniel 10, verses 19. Don't be afraid, he said, for you are very precious to God. Peace, be encouraged, be strong. And he spoke these words to me. I suddenly felt stronger and said to him, please speak to me, my Lord, for you have strengthened me. <laughs> you are greatly beloved. Yes. Fear not. Wow. wow. You'd say, well, I wish an angel would say that to me. <laughs> but actually, Jesus. God himself has said it to us. Yes. Yes. Amen. Give me some Bible promises. Maybe mm -hmm. some folks, Evelyn, are not as acquainted with the Bible. Can you think of a Bible promise that speaks about not needing to be afraid? There are lots of them. Mm -hmm. Is there one that comes to your mind? While you're thinking, Rodney has one. May Rodney? I, may I read one? Absolutely. Joshua of course. 1. Joshua 1. Joshua chapter 1. Yes, okay. Please. And I will read verse 9. I was thinking you might read verse 9. Yes. <laughs> Joshua. Amen. Joshua chapter, chapter 1. 1. And verse 9. And verse 9. And what translation of the Bible do you have? I have a New King James Version. All right. Here Joshua has just begun his work mm -hmm. as the uh, leader following the great man of God, Moses. 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 <coughs> and what's the word there in Joshua 1, 9? Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of a good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Is that Moses speaking to Joshua? No. 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 Who's speaking to Joshua? God himself. Verse 1, it says, uh, the Lord spoke to Joshua, right? right? Be uh, strong and of good courage. Do not fear yeah. or be dismayed. Mm -hmm. All right. Now you found one, Evelyn, then we'll come to Stephanie. By the way, this is important. It's not just, well, I heard someone say... Well, I think, no, we're reading promises from the Bible. The battle's real, but God comes to Daniel and says, you're greatly beloved, don't be afraid. Mm. Right? Amen. Evelyn, where would you like to read? From? Um, so Psalms chapter 27, verse 1. Psalm 27. Verse 1. Is one of the Psalms of David. Mm -hmm. Psalm 27. By the way, I used to think that all of the Psalms were written by David. I was wrong. <laughs> uh, there are lots of other psalms written by Moses and, yep. and Asaph. And, but this, I think, is a psalm of David. Yes. And you'd like to read verse 1? Mm -hmm. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. I was wanting to put one word in there to... to uh, to make it even more clear, because David obviously knows where he stands, mm -hmm. yeah. but I would tell people when, yeah. hmm. when, yeah. okay? So when the Lord is your light and salvation, Amen. you don't have anyone to fear, Amen. right? Mm -hmm. When the Lord is the strength of your life, mm -hmm. you don't need to be afraid. Mm -hmm. So what's key there? Mm -hmm. What makes the difference? We need to have the Lord with us. I make the choice to say, be the Lord of my life, Amen. right? Amen. Yes. Be my, the God of my salvation. Mm -hmm. and that's the same as Ephesians 6. I need to do what to the armor? He says, I belong to you. And the prophet says, put on the armor. Amen. You're going to experience what? A battle. A battle. Mm -hmm. You're going to experience a spiritual battle. battle. But we don't need to be afraid. Stephanie, you had another uh, encouraging word. By the way, the verse you read, may be exactly the verse someone on Hope Sabbath School needs to hear today. Mm -hmm. It may be a verse that was given to her as a child, mm -hmm. and she forgot it, mm -hmm. but she's going to hear it again. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So what's the verse that the Spirit brought to your mind? Exodus 14, verses 13 and 14. Second book of the Old Testament Scriptures, Exodus chapter 14. Yes. Verse verses 13, 13 and, 14. and 14. You know, I really like it when we do this kind of Bible study. Now, it's not just random. We're focusing on why we don't need to be afraid, right? Yeah. Because of the right. victory that is ours in God. Exodus uh, 14, 13 and 14. Correct. And I'm reading from the King James Version. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you, ye have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Amen. The Lord will fight, shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Oh, <laughs> Amen. What's the setting? Do you know in, in Exodus 14, John? The Israelites are on the banks of the Red Sea. Mm-hmm. And what's behind them? And the Egyptian armies are fast approaching. I mean, this is a lethal weapon. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they're in the sights of the le- lethal weapon. Mm-hmm. And God says what? The Egyptians stand. Stand. Right? stand still. Stand still. Stand still. Stand still. I'm with you. Watch the Lord fight for you. Watch what God's going to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, that's only meaningful if I've taken my stand mm-hmm. under the banner of the Lord. Amen. Right? Amen. Yes. If I've taken my stand under his banner. Well, we could look at some other Bible texts, but I want to give you a chance in the last few minutes of our study to share another testimony, not where you felt Satan trying to hinder God's purpose, but where God delivered you from fear as you trusted wholly in him. Anybody have a testimony where, where it's like, well, mm. he delivered me. Mm. So that I know that my life and my future rest in his care. Alex. I was at a point in my life, and I've shared part of this testimony before on here, but I was at a point in my life where I was, I was scared about what the future was holding for me. Um, I was heavy into drugs and, and doing things to the world, going out to clubs and such. And, um, and I was in a rut. I couldn't get out of this rut. And I, my only resource left was God, and I, I knew to look to Him. And I cried out to him. I said, Lord, I can't get through this by myself. I've tried. You've seen me try before, and I fall every time. Mm. Get me out of this rut that I'm in. And, um, and it was a scary prayer to pray because in my mind, you know, the only thing I thought could get me out of this is either going to jail for something, you know, for a long time for something, for something that people's hanging out with or something bad happening to me uh, through other things. And, and probably um, the devil would say, you only two options or jail or death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you refuse to believe that. What God happened? has a different plan for me, you know, and uh, it, was, it was a couple months after that, um, but it just in a very, very, um, very real way, he picked me up and turned me around. He put, pulled me out of the situation I was in, pulled me away from the situation I was in for like mm-hmm. a month and a half, and uh, put me in touch with the right people, and I turned around, and I haven't looked back since. And here he is on Hope Sabbath School. Amen. 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 What does that tell you? God, God is, is able. victorious. Mm-hmm. God is able. No, He's right. able. Right. Mm-hmm. The battle's real, mm-hmm. but God is able to deliver those who call upon Him. Someone else, a time when God delivered mm-hmm. you from fear as you trusted wholly in Him. Mm-hmm. Anybody mm-hmm. else have a story to share? I have a psalm. It's, well, you, others... You have a, 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 psalm, a Bible right? text, okay? Yeah, while others are thinking. All right. Psalm 23, verses 4 through 6. All right. Uh, this is a psalm of David, Psalm 23, probably one of the best-known psalms for anyone who's been reading them. Right. It's the one about the Lord being our shepherd, isn't yes. it? And what translation will you be reading from, then? New King James Version. And you want to read verses 4 through 6 yes. of Psalm 23? Yes. All right. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Um, Do we know how old uh, David was when he wrote this psalm? No. Mm. Any idea? Yeah. Anyone? I think he was still a shepherd boy. Like okay, a he's still writing at least in shepherd language, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So Shane is saying he's probably still a shepherd, yeah. <laughs> which would mean he was fairly young, yeah. maybe even like still a teenager, teenager right? Mm-hmm. Early 20s. And he says, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
He's going to have to do that many times with King Saul trying to kill him, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I will fear no evil. Amen. Pray You're on. with me. Amen. That's enough. Mm -hmm. And he uses the imagery of, of a shepherd, rod and staff, yeah. right, for guidance and mm -hmm. for protection. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, did you have a testimony you wanted to share? Yeah, just something quick. Um, well, I knew from a while back God was calling me to step out of my comfort zone and he was saying, Evelyn, you need to evangelize, maybe do a Bible study or um, preach. And I was afraid of it. And so early this year, I was praying to God. I was like, God, if you're leading me to do ministry, uh, guide me to it. And I just want to be happy and rejoice in you. Um, so I was uh, afraid for a while because I was like, what if I'm not following God's will? What if I don't follow through? And uh, I got in contact with Milena here in Hope Sabbath School. And she said, we're looking for a Bible study partner, like, uh, or a Bible worker uh, partner. Will you please be my partner? I was like, you know what? This is the perfect opportunity. Amen. And I know, I know God led me to that. So Amen. that's my little testimony hey. that I know God led me into Amen. doing his, his work there. And now you're here on Hope Sabbath School. Yeah. <laughs> and your, your professional goal is, is not to be a pastor. Mm. You're, you're studying... To be a nurse. To be a nurse. Amen. How many people think Christian nurses are a good idea? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. You know, when we are delivered from fear to say, God, let your purpose be fulfilled in my life, mm -hmm. um, we can have perfect peace. Doesn't it say he'll keep you in perfect peace? Mm -hmm. His mind is stayed, stayed on you. Why? Because she trusts in you. Because he trusts in you. And that battle that we experience, Daniel chapter 10 talks about it. Even... Holy angels are involved in this cosmic battle, like Gabriel. But Michael, the leader of the angels, comes. We're going to learn more about Michael in a future study here in the book of Daniel. But deliverance comes from the Lord. And we can experience that same deliverance in our lives. We can experience the same supernatural protection. We can hear the same words that Daniel heard. You are greatly beloved by God. What a precious promise that is. Let's rejoice in His victory, whatever challenge we're facing today. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, many who are watching Hope Sabbath School today realize the battle is intense. Mm. And I just thank you for the assurance that there is victory in you. Mm. But some may be learning for the first time. And I pray that rather than being fearful about this real cosmic battle, we would come to you, stand under your protection, stand under your banner, and be at peace in your victory. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us. What an amazing study. What a peace and joy is ours. Beloved children of God, go out and share that good news with those around you.